Welcome, today we start a series of videos around Spring Boot 3.2.0 and Spring Authorization Server 1.2.0. All data from the Spring Authorization Server is stored in a database based on JDBC client. We start in a browser window to view the result of all the code. We open 127.0.0.1 port 8080 in a private browser window. This page is accessible to everyone. When we click on users or authorities we are redirected to the login screen of the Spring Authorization Server. We can now log in with a user and password, after which we will be redirected to the consent screen of the Spring Authorization Server. Now we need to indicate the scopes we want to use. If everything went well, we are returned to the OAuth2 client page. And we see a list of all users. If we click on authorities, we get a page with a list of all authorities. We can now go to Eclipse, we have three new projects. Spring Resource Server 1 Spring Boot Client and Spring Authorization Server. We start with the code of the Spring Authorization Server. In the POM XML file we have Spring Boot Starter 3.2.0 and Java version 21. With these dependencies, Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Authorization Server Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf Spring Boot Starter JDBC Spring Session JDBC MariaDB Java Client In Application YAML we have Server Port 9000 Application Name Virtual Threads All Configuration for the Database an encryptor password and salt for the JWT tokens. And the logging level config. Then comes the schema SQL file, with the configuration of the database tables. Users. Users info, for one of the following videos. Authorities. OAuth2 registered client. Spring session. Spring Session Attributes OAuth2 Authorization OAuth2 Authorization Consent and RSA Key Pairs The Spring Authorization Server main class is a standard Spring Boot main class. Security Config with Configuration and Enable Web Security Annotations and the next beans the first security filter chain bean. Consent page. OIDC with defaults. Exception handling. And OAuth2 resource server. The second security filter chain bean. Authorize HTTP requests. And form login. Password encoder bean. JDBC Registered Client Repository with JDBC Template JDBC User Details Manager with Data Source JDBC OAuth2 Authorization Service with JDBC Operations and Registered Client Repository JDBC OAuth2 Authorization Consent Service with JDBC Operations and Registered Client Repository the login controller class with controller annotation. We are making available OAuth2 authorization consent service with constructor injection. And two endpoints. The first for the login page. And the second for the consent page. The code comes from one of the previous videos. The next block of code is all to enable rotating JWT tokens.
We start with the init RSA key pairs which implements application runner. The code in the run method is executed every time the spring authorization server is started. We check if the RSA key pairs table is empty. If this is the case, we will make a new set of JWT keys. Then the key controller follows every time we make a GET request to OAuth two new JWKS, a new set of JWT keys is created. In the RSA key pair repository interface we configure an RSA key pair record and the methods. Find key pairs. Delete. And save. In the JDBC RSA key repository class we implement all the methods of the previous interface. We create JDBC template. Row mapper. RSA public key converter and RSA private key converter available and implement find key pairs delete and save in key config configuration class we define the beans text encryptor nimbus jwt encoder and oauth2 token generator in the keys component class we create the two JWT keys, one public and one private. In RSA key pair repository JWK source component we make RSA key pair repository available and we have two helper methods to create the JWT keys. The customize method is also used to configure additional claims in the access token and the ID token. The RSA key pair row mapper component is also a auxiliary class. RSA private key converter and RSA public key converter are used to encrypt the keys when we store them in the database table. We have already used this block of code in an earlier video about Spring Authorization Server. The last files of the Spring Authorization Server are the login and consent page. The login page is a simple form with username and password. The consent page is slightly more extensive to realize all possibilities. Both pages are almost identical to the standard Spring Security pages with a slightly different style. We now look at the code of the Spring Resource Server. In the POM XML file we have Spring Boot Starter 3.2.0 and Java version 21. The Dependencies Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Resource Server Spring Boot Starter Web Spring Boot Starter JDBC and MariaDB Java Client in the application YAML file we have server port 8091. Application name. Virtual threads. The address of the Spring Authorization Server. The database configuration. And the logging level. The main class is standard. In the security config we have the security filter chain bean and the JWT authentication converter to convert the claims to roles. The rest of the code is needed to make the users and authorities available via REST endpoints. The user record with the username, password and enabled fields. Authority record with the username and authority fields. In the user service class we retrieve the user data from the database table with JDBC client. In the authority service class we retrieve the authority data from the database table with JDBC client. The end of the chain are the two controller classes. In the user controller we currently have one endpoint get all users. The same for the authority controller. Here 2 1 endpoint gets all authorities. We now look at the code of the Spring Boot client.
In the Palm XML file we have Spring Boot Starter 3.2.0 and Java version 21. The dependencies. Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 client. Spring Boot Starter web. Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf. And Timeleaf Extra Spring Security 6. In the application YAML file we have server port 8080. Application name. Virtual threads. Timeleaf cache. The configuration for OAuth 2 security. The address of the Spring resource server. And the logging level. The main class is standard. In the security config class we have a security filter chain bean with the configuration of PKCE. Authorize HTTP requests. OAuth2 login. And OAuth2 client with defaults. The code to communicate with the Spring resource server starts with the user client interface. For now we only have two methods, get users and get authorities. The rest client config, this class is more extensive than normal. Because we want to use rest client to send an OAuth2 bearer token, we used an interceptor. Spring Boot will automatically address this in one of the next updates. We start by retrieving the client ID and REST client URL from the application YAML file. We create a client registration. Create a client HTTP request interceptor with the OAuth2 authorized client manager. Create a REST client with the builder. Then comes the REST client adapter and the HTTP service proxy factory, and return the user client. In the auth rest client interceptor which implements client HTTP request interceptor, we override one method intercept. Here we retrieve the access token and create an authorization header with the bearer token. Now we can convert the data from the Spring resource server into data for the web pages. The user record with username, password, and enabled. The authority record with username and authority. Now the two services follow. In user service we make user client available and retrieve a list of users from the resource server. And in authority service we make user client available and retrieve a list of authorities users from the resource server. The last blocks of code are the controllers and the HTML pages. In the home controller we have the endpoint for the index HTML page. In the user controller we make the user service available and for the time being we have one endpoint get users. We retrieve the list of users and pass it with a model to the user's HTML page. The authority controller is the same as the user's controller, but now we retrieve the authorities and return a list of all authorities with a model to the authority HTML page. The last block are the HTML pages. The index HTML page is very simple with three links. Home. Users. And authorities. In the user's HTML page we use Timeleaf to convert the list of users into readable text. We show the username, password, and enabled. The authority's HTML page is the same as the user's page, but now we show the list of authorities. The last file is the very simple style CSS file. This will be expanded later. To conclude this video, I would like to briefly show the database structure and contents of the various tables. In the users table we have five users. Admin User User 1 User 2 And User 3 The authorities table has one or more authorities for each user.
The registered client table now has one record with all client data and settings. The spring session tables have no data for the time being. OAuth 2 authorization has one record of the test in the beginning of this video. OAuth 2 authorization consent also has one record. RSA key pairs has one JWT set of keys. This happens automatically when starting the project. That's it for this video. In the next video we will further expand the users and authorities, and we will create new users. Thank you for following and supporting our channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel, that way you won't miss any new content. Thank you.